Congratulations, you have made it to the final video of our transformations unit. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, for today, you will need your booklet as always. It should be completed now with just a couple of little addendum pages stapled on to your back cover. You will also need two colors to write with today and as always, a straight edge if you wish. So let's start by defining the last two words in your glossary. They are line symmetry, and rotational symmetry. So let's get both of those in the shot. And you can go ahead and pause the video so you can get those definitions copied down. Again, it's line symmetry and rotational symmetry. Okay, so line symmetry is just when a figure has symmetry such that there is a line you can flip it over and it ends up right back on itself. It ends up looking exactly the same. Whereas rotational symmetry is a little less um, well known, but that is where a figure has symmetry such that you can spin it and it'll end up looking the same if you spin it the right number of degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn in your booklet to the last page, which is, or to your back cover so that we can work on these addendum pages. So we're today going to be talking about mapping an image onto itself. If you have a regular polygon, which just means a figure in which all the sides are the same length, like this little pentagon that I have here, um, if you have a regular polygon, then its rotational symmetry can be found by taking the number of sides, so in this pentagon there are five sides, and dividing it, dividing 360 by the number of sides. So for this first example, it wants to know what rotation would map a regular pentagon onto itself. Well, we would say 360, because there are 360 degrees in a circle, divided by 5, because we have 5 sides that are all the same on this pentagon. When you divide 360 by 5, you can do that in whatever method you choose. I'm just going to be lazy here. And 360 divided by 5 is 72. So what that means is if I take this pentagon and I spin it, 72 degrees, then I end up with a pentagon that looks the same. So my rotational symmetry is on the center of it, and I can rotate 72 degrees, and it just keeps looking exactly the same. Okay, so that's rotational symmetry, easy enough to find. Line symmetry is when we have a figure that can be reflected over a line, and it ends up being the same. So I'm going to start with this example two by plotting this triangle um, ABC. So point one three is A, point five six is B, and then C is right here at nine three. So here's my little triangle. And what you've got to do is kind of think back to art class. And where is the line of symmetry in this figure? So where's the part where if I fold it in half, each side is going to look exactly the same? And there's not really a rule for how to do this other than just looking at it, really. The line of symmetry for this triangle is going to be right here. because then both halves look exactly the same, which is part of our definition. Okay, so that means that if I take this image and reflect it over this point, my C is right now one, two, three, four spaces away. So when I reflect it, it's going to be one, two, three, four spaces away on this side. So that'll be C prime. My A is right now one, two, three, four spaces to this side. So now it's going to be one, two, three, four spaces to this side. So that's my A prime. B just stays on top of itself. So I end up with the exact same triangle just turned around. It's in the same spot and everything. So then to write the definition of that, the question was what line could you reflect this triangle over? Well, that line is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the equation of that line, remember that vertical lines are x equals if it had been a horizontal line, we would have put y equals something. But this is x equals 5 because I'm 5 over and all my x values are 5. All right, 
When you get to class on Monday, we will talk about some other examples and other ways that you can see mapping figures. For now, have a great weekend, and we will see you Monday.